Okay, so today we're gonna to review NordVPN by trying to destroy this laptop. We'll still cover the pros and cons and how they stack up against Surfshark and ExpressVPN, but we're also going to put their malware blocking feature Threat Protection Pro to the test. We're gonna click the weirdest links, localhookup.com. I'm glad that image is blanked out. Download the dodgiest software, the top 100 virus infected websites, and even try to download GTA 6. This looks legitimate. And see if Nord can actually save it. So if you've ever wondered if NordVPN is really worth the hype or you just wanna watch me try and break this thing, stick around. Let's just get the technical stuff done first and fast, starting with something very important, privacy. So NordVPN is based in Panama where there are no data retention laws, meaning no government spying and no obligation for them to store what you do online. They've also been audited multiple times to prove they're not logging your activity or keeping any records behind the scenes. NordVPN has over 7,000 servers across 118 countries, which is a lot. And more servers means less overcrowding, faster connections, and way more options for switching locations. And when I was testing NordVPN, it did feel fast. And that's not just because they have more servers than the Sultan of Brunei, but because of something called Nord Links. Basically, there's an old way that VPNs would connect you to the internet. And it was like trying to squeeze a lorry through an alleyway. But then came something called WireGuard, a much better system that's faster and more secure. And Nord Links is Nord's custom version of this, but with a few extra tweaks that make it even better for privacy and very fast for streaming and gaming. So if you've ever wondered why Nord always ranks high for speed, well, there's your answer. Now, obviously, anytime you use a VPN, it does slow down your internet. Unfortunately, that's just how it works. And in real world speed tests, like the ones done by CNET, Surfshark was slower than my Nan trying to run, ExpressVPN had a speed loss of 17%, and NordVPN, well, they were seriously fast with a loss of only 2.9%. Now, if you're into downloading large files, totally legal stuff, of course. Okay, so we're gonna download FIFA. This website looks dodgy. NordVPN has P2P optimized servers, which are built specifically for torrenting. They're designed to keep it fast and secure, and unlike some VPNs that allow torrenting on any old random server, Nord actually routes you through servers that are made for it. But, and this is a bit nerdy, they don't offer port forwarding. Some other VPNs like Private Internet Access or Mulvad do, and yes, that can improve torrenting speeds in certain setups, but it also opens you up to more risk. And NordVPN's view on this is quite clear. They won't compromise security just to download something a few minutes faster, which is fair enough. Also, another feature that shows just how seriously they take security, especially if you're torrenting, is kill switch. So if your VPN drops for any reason, this instantly cuts your connection so your real IP doesn't leak. It's automatic, built in, and just takes a few clicks to turn on. How Kill Switch works does depend on what device you're using. So on Windows or Android, it'll just block your internet until the VPN reconnects. But on Mac OS, like my MacBook, you have to manually select which apps you want to cut off if the VPN drops. This is a bit more hands-on, but it does give you more control, which I kind of like. Nord also offers other speciality servers like Double VPN, which routes your traffic through two servers, and Onion Over VPN, which combines Nord with the Tor network for even more privacy. Then there's obfuscated servers. They're specialized VPN servers, which hide the fact that you're using a VPN and reroute your traffic. Which is especially useful for accessing apps or websites that actively try to block VPN users. And this could be very handy if you're traveling or living abroad but still want to be able to access the content that you pay for at home. If you ever need to securely share files between devices or even set up your own private network, NordVPN has a feature called MeshNet that lets you link up to 60 devices. And we'll test this properly later, but just so you know, it's built in and it's really simple to use. And if all of those features sound good to you already, I've put a link in the description box with a big discount and four extra months free on their two year plan. It is an affiliate link, so if you want to support myself and the channel, then please consider using it. Nord also has a 30 day money back guarantee, which I actually tested. You just message support, ask for a refund, and they send you a link straight to the billing page. Click refund and that's it. I got my money back in under three hours. Now, let's try and download some malware. NordVPN's Plus and Ultimate plans come with Threat Protection Pro, and it's meant to block malware, dodgy websites, and even scan downloaded files before they can infect your system. Now, I've gone ahead and switched off the inbuilt protection that this laptop has, and also I've turned off McAfee, and I've switched on Nord. This laptop is very light. <laughs> I've switched on Nord's Threat Protection Pro. 
Also, I'm quite paranoid that malware could harm my home network, so I have a solution. I'm gonna be tethering this blank iPhone, which might normally mean slower internet, but I'm actually using a Sally eSIM, which is really fast. And honestly, this has nothing to do with them being part of NordVPN. I'm just using Sally because I think they're one of the best eSIM providers right now. And if you wanna see an honest review with a lot of testing, then check out this video I made recently. I'll put a link in the description box below for that one. So let's just begin by downloading some files from download.com. Talking desktop clock, that looks dangerous. So let's click download now. Oh, NordVPN has just blocked it. This website has been identified as a malware site. That was too easy. Okay, so Windows has also told me not to download this. Let's download it anyway. Every ounce of my body does not want to click on these. Okay, so Nord has scanned the file and has told me that no threats have been found. I won't install it, but I'll test it later on a website like Virus Total. Let's up the ante. The top 100 virus infected websites, King Family Photo Album, <laughs> weird URL. Well, that was too easy. But one surefire way to get malware is to write free and cracked. Fitgirl-repacks.site. That sounds hideous. It's checking for viruses for me. Well, that's useful. Oh, no viruses detected. Excellent. Oh, no, that's been blocked as well. GTA 6 cracked PC edition. This looks legitimate. Everything I, <laughs> I've not even been able to download anything yet because NordVPN continues to block everything, which I guess is a good thing. Local hookups now. Localhookup.com. We gotta get these things moving because <laughs> suspicious sight ahead. I'm trying to get things moving. I'm glad that image is blanked out, by the way. It doesn't work. Okay, but it does work, but I, I can't get through because again, NordVPN has blocked me. Nine websites blocked. 659 ads and trackers blocked. Oh my God. Look at all these trackers. Oh wow, grandma's. <laughs> and that was from just one hour of browsing. Can you imagine a full day or even a year? Which got me thinking, what are the trackers actually doing and why are there so many? Most websites you enter are stuffed with trackers that follow you from one page to another, creating a unique profile of who you are and what you like. So that's why when you Google a random back pain stretch, you then get bombarded by therapeutic mattress adverts. And that's something Nord is protecting you from. Not mattresses, but it's blocking those trackers before they can do anything, before they can target, and helping protect your privacy just so you can browse the internet in peace. And a quick note here, I know ad blockers can be a bit of a nightmare for people like me who make stuff on the internet. They do cut into how we make a living, but Nord actually lets you whitelist websites you want to support, which I really appreciate. It means you can still block the garbage while keeping ads for the people and the platforms you care about. One platform I don't care about is the Daily Mail. And here's what the site looks like with the the ad blocker turned off. As you can see, it's hideous. But switch it on and the ads vanish. And besides those clickbaity, salacious, horrible headlines, the browsing experience is drastically better. There's also a sneaky extra benefit to blocking those ads. You're loading less stuff, which means you're saving data. So if you're like me and tethering off an eSIM and paying per gigabyte, this feature can actually save you money. So while attempting to download malware and testing the ad blocker on this thing, I did end up with almost a gigabyte of screen recordings stuck on the laptop. And transferring files from Windows to Mac is not exactly plug and play. Hello, I'm a Mac. Hello, I'm a PC. We have a lot in common these days. We share files, it's great, we just get a lot. PC. But this is where NordVPN's MeshNet really comes in handy. And let me give you an example. Let's just say you like to film your content on an iPhone, but you actually edit on a Windows laptop, or you could make a video like the one I'm making that was so easy. Like all I had to do was install Nord on this device and my phone and then link them using MeshNet. And it sent that video and almost a gigabyte of screen recordings in less than a minute. And honestly, this solves a massive pain point for me. Like one of the reasons why I still use an iPhone and not an Android is because AirDrop makes it really easy to get stuff from my phone to my MacBook or vice versa. But with MeshNet, I can escape Apple's ecosystem and try a different phone. And unlike AirDrop, it doesn't require Bluetooth, so you can connect devices like this laptop from anywhere around the world. So I could be traveling and then still access my home computer. Now, after getting nowhere trying to infect this laptop, 
Out of curiosity, I decided to unblock download.com and just get four dodgy looking files, which NordVPN did scan. And did they pass? Well, yes. But were they actually safe? Because let's be honest, NordVPN is not a specialist antivirus, and even they admit that. So to really find out, I uploaded those same files to VirusTotal, which checks them against dozens of antivirus engines, and ran them through Malwarebytes, which is specifically designed to find malware. The first file came back clean. The second, and third, well, VirusTotal flagged a potential risk, but Malwarebytes said they were fine, so maybe this was a false positive. But the fourth one? VirusTotal lit up and indicated something malicious. So did Nord's threat protection miss this? Well, interestingly, Malwarebytes still didn't flag it. So either it's an undetectable threat or just very suspicious looking. Either way, these tests just weren't conclusive enough for me, so I had to go up the ante. I headed to a malware repository. This is kind of like a sweet shop, except the sweets are laced with cyanide. And I chose hawkeye.exe, a well-known and very dangerous password stealer. It can lift your bank details, steal your crypto, and log your keystrokes. So if Nord doesn't flag this, then I'd be seriously concerned. Windows first tried to stop me, of course we ignored Bill, and NordVPN then scanned the file and instantly blocked it, flagged it as malware, and cut the connection. So at this point, I've come to the conclusion that no, Threat Protection Pro is not a full-on antivirus. But what it does offer, and what most people actually need, is just solid, always-on protection against phishing, scam links, dodgy downloads, and the other nasty parts of the internet. It runs in the background, doesn't slow you down, and in my tests, blocked pretty much everything I threw at it. But after all that testing, you know what surprised me the most about NordVPN? Something I would absolutely recommend to you and the feature I found to be the most useful? Not having to deal with those annoying recaptures. You know those puzzles where it asks you to click every square with a bus or a motorcycle or a goddamn traffic light? Here we go again, traffic lights. Boom, boom, boom. Do you count that as a traffic light? I would, let's do it. No! Well, they were gone. And that's thanks to using a dedicated IP address. So instead of sharing an IP with thousands of other VPN users, which gets flagged constantly, a dedicated IP means you avoid this and you get a smoother login experience. And if you work remotely, you can even get access to IP restricted systems. This isn't a headline feature, but it is one of those small things that makes using NordVPN feel even more seamless. This is an additional feature that you will have to pay for. And I'm gonna go into more details on the costs and the various plans, but there are a few other perks worth mentioning first, and they are very important. So customer support is 24 seven, and I tested it and messaged them during the week and on the weekend, and both times I got a response almost instantly. It wasn't a bot either, at least I don't think, it did feel quite human, and email support was a little slower, but I did receive a response within 24 hours. There's also another feature called Dark Web Monitor, which scans data breaches and notifies you if your data has been part of a leak. In my case, it turns out I have been exposed. And while Nord can't magically fix this, the alert does give me a chance to change my passwords and make sure I have two-factor authentication enabled. And lastly, Smart DNS. Now this lets you stream content from other regions around the world on a smart TV, or in my case, an Apple TV. And it's easy to set up. You just enable it in your Nord account and then change the DNS settings on your TV to use Nord's smart DNS servers. All right, let's talk prices. Because NordVPN is definitely not the cheapest, but when you compare what you're getting, so Threat Protection Pro, MeshNet, 7,000 plus servers, great customer support, it's pretty stacked. ExpressVPN is actually more expensive in the long run with fewer servers and no real malware protection unless you start stacking on extras, and it allows just eight devices per account, whereas Nord is capped at 10. Surfshark is cheaper, especially on longer duration plans, but the trade-off is fewer premium features like MeshNet. ProtonVPN, has a great free plan and some advanced privacy tools, but again, it does have a reputation for being slow, and TunnelBear offers a free plan, except it's limited to two gigabytes of browsing. So yeah, NordVPN might not be the cheapest, but it does offer the most value out of all of these other providers. And if you're the kind of person who likes raw data, check out this comparison spreadsheet over on r forward slash VPN. I'll link it below. It ranks dozens of providers across things like speed, logging policy features, and prices. And yes, NordVPN is sitting on top. So if you found this video useful and you want to sign up for Nord, then please consider using the link in the description box. Again, that's an affiliate link, so you'll be supporting the channel and myself, and also getting four months free off a two-year NordVPN plan. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.